Hey everybody, it's Lori Finkelstein Reader here live on Table Talk Live. This is a very exciting time for us. This is, and I, I have got such a great person on our show today. I'm so excited. And Nick Baldwin is someone who, I'm gonna tell you a little bit about him. He's someone who I have wanted desperately to bring live to all of you that are watching. Table Talk Live was born because people like myself would never have gotten to where I am had I not had amazing mentors and people around me. I give all my success to those who stopped. They took the time to teach me, to share with me. And that's what Table Talk Live is about. It's about me going out and finding incredible contributors. And when we talk about contributors to real estate, okay, so Nick, you're at the top of that chart. I wanna tell you guys just a little bit about him. There's so many great things, I had to write it down. <laughs> the amazing Nick Baldwin is the regional tech trainer for the Michigan and Northern Ohio KW region. Nick has trained top agents and top teams on how to incorporate tech into their business, has done it in the past, is doing it currently has run, to my knowledge, two very, very successful real estate teams. And the thing that blows my mind about you, Nick, is that you're the co-founder of what I believe is the largest real estate community. And man, do we all need community. And that is the amazing, badass lab coat agents. There are 2,000 plus members. You guys, that means there's- 200, 200. 200,000, 200,000. That means there's 400,000 eyeballs on your platform. 400,000, right? Look at those Whoa, eyeballs. That's a lot of eyeballs. Um, and most importantly, <clears throat> Nick is an incredible dad to those cute little boys, Levi and Gus, and your super beautiful wife, <laughs> Anne. Um, I thank you so much for taking the time out of your busy schedule and coming on to Table Talk Live and just to dive in and the thing that I most admire about you, I just want you to know that I do stalk your, your, your social media and I'm one of your fans and I follow you. And so Nick, I'm a very big proponent of, you know, taking care of ourselves and uh, what we feed our mind and how we move our body and our environment around us. Because my personal coach has really taught me that how I show up personally is how I will show up professionally. Um, and you have just been a voice in the world when it comes to mental health and how we deal with certain things, whether it's depression, anxiety, life. I mean, I can tell you right now, I'm, I'm right there with you, my friend. It's been a tough past seven months. And you give people permission to be okay what you offer, it's far beyond real estate. I, I got goosebumps all over my body. And I just, I'm so grateful for what you give to our community as real estate agents. And I'd love to, before we dive into the real estate questions, I know it's really important for you to talk a little bit about that. So this is your yeah. platform right now. <laughs> Go for it. Well, I appreciate that. Um, you know, <clears throat> being vulnerable and transparent and being outspoken about topics that tend to be, I don't know if controversial is the word, but misunderstood, um, <clears throat> especially mental health is something, uh, depression, anxiety, and ADHD is something I've been struggling with for, well, depression and anxiety more than a decade. Um, and, you know, there's, there's a lot of misunderstood um, feelings about it in the sense that there's a huge difference between depression and being depressed and anxiety and having anxiety, right? Two different things, completely different. Uh, depression is a chemical imbalance in the brain that affects your mood in very drastic ways, up and down. Anxiety is, yes, everyone gets anxious because they get stressed, but having anxiety is a completely different. It is that times a hundred. It is the feeling of nervousness and and, and fear and, and stress, um, really for no reason at all. Like I wake up, you know, I do, I do the things that I need to do. I know what I need to do. I'm good at what I need to do. Um, I'm good at what I, what I do in general, but it's still a feeling that like never goes away all the time. Like there's moments where, um, yes, I have no anxiety, but it's fleeting. And then I've realized that I have no anxiety and then the anxiety comes back. So I'm very open about it because I know that 
in the real estate profession. And by the way, anxiety and depression can come on at any point in life. Um, and it can just happen or it can happen because of a, 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 a terrible situation that someone might have been in that that traumatized them in a sense. Like an event. Yeah, like an event. But with depression, it's very dark and uh, you don't have a reason. Uh, everything is great, especially my life is great. I have a beautiful wife. I have two awesome kids. I make a good living. I have a good job. I have a, a nice house. I just got a new car. None of that stuff matters, right? Like people go, what are you, what are you depressed about? Like you have everything. None of that matters. None of it matters, you know? And so I'm very aware of the fact that I, that when I get go into a depression, I know that I'm in a depression and I acknowledge it. And so that's one of the hardest things to do is to be aware of it. And I'm also, because of depression and anxiety, I'm also a very good reader of other people's um, uh, personalities. I can tell if somebody's in a funk over even a text, right? I can tell if someone's not in a good mood by an email. It doesn't have to be yeah. like this face to face. Right. You're very in tune with somebody else's energy, yeah. where, they're, where they're at. Like one of my friends, her name's Kimberly. She's up in Boston. She's an agent. And I just got a weird feeling from her one day because she was texting me and it wasn't her normal personality via text. And I'm like, is everything okay? She's like, yeah, why? I go, well, you just aren't texting me like you normally do. She goes, you know what? She's like, you are like, what? she's like, what? how do you, I, she goes, I've, I've never met. I've never met someone who's that in tune. Right. She's like, yeah, I'm going through a lot of stuff right now. And then she started pouring it all out. But like, I'm not afraid to talk about, to talk about that because it's something that needs to be talked about because people think that they can't. And especially in this moment that we're in, you know, pandemic economy, it can be extremely scary. Your kids are home. Um, in fact, this situation that we're in could bring on depression, not being depressed. It could trigger depression because it's a traumatizing experience that we're going through all of us together. I'm also, um, yeah, I just feel like, um, someone needs to talk about it. You know why I talk about it? I also talk about it because there's, there's a, um, expectation in our industry for some reason. It could be every industry. I don't know, but I focus on real estate specifically that you always have to act as if your business is crushing. Right. You're, yeah. Everything is. Right. You, have to, you have to put that mask on. And, yeah. and I'm talking about the shield, the whole shield that everything's perfect and yeah. life's great and everything's fine. Oh, yeah. We know that that's not true. Like, you know, every business has issues every single day, no matter how big or small you are. Right. You run a huge organization, you know, and I'm sure that every single day something goes wrong. And we can't, we have to stop acting like nothing goes wrong. And we have to start acting truthfully and honestly, mm -hmm. you know, agents like you didn't just get there, but we don't talk about how we got there, what we did wrong on the way up, right. you know? How, and so I'm friends with a lot of people in the industry who are, who are considered leaders and who are leaders. And I say to them, I'm like, you know, it doesn't always have to be perfect. Sometimes going out there and saying, listen, I'm having a really rough day. Yeah. Like that can help more people than pretending that everything's great all the time. Absolutely, Nick. You know, everything you say, it's just, it's so raw and transparent and it does need to be talked about. And, and I, I've learned so much in the last couple of years. And the biggest thing is, is my community, the people who are in my community that give me permission to have that bad day. I give them permission to cry because there's a loss or something happened to their child, right? Life is not perfect. And we, we tend as a community talk more about failing than about winning, you know? Um, and some people do feel they have to keep up that facade until they can't. 
And I just think that when someone like you really talks about, because you are so successful, it doesn't mean that you can't have everything in your life. You right. just have to learn how to grow with it and work through it. Make sure you have the right resources. And again, I have so much respect for you because honestly, um, it's very important that people see someone in leadership that has your what you're going through because it makes it okay for for them and that's super super important so so with that being said knowing that you do have this that you deal with yeah. dealing with it or not dealing with it how do you keep a strong growth mindset what do you do so that you can power through it because in my opinion whether this is something someone's been dealing with for 10 years or seven months I mean, I'm speaking to people every day and I, I, I feel like I'm a hotline because I want to let people know I'm here for you. I can help you. We don't have to talk real estate. We can just talk life. So what are some of the things that you do to keep your mindset so powerful? Yeah. That's a good question. So, you know, luckily I have, you know, there's a, there comes a certain point where like you sort of get it under control, right? Like, I'm on the right medication. I'm, and I'm very a big proponent of medication. Like people say to me, you know, well, don't you think it's your diet? And don't you think it's, you know, how many hours you sleep or whatever? Look at, look at that. None of that matters. None of it, right? None of it. None of it matters. It's not what you eat. It's not how much you sleep. I mean, sleep helps. It's not exercise. It's none of that. Because that can't bring the chemicals in your brain together to get along with one another. None of that was. Yes, some journaling, reading, that stuff helps me focus and 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 get and get to a point where I'm not feeling like um uh, like I'm not feeling like I'm not in that dark place. Um what what I have done, I know that I have to do certain things. Um, every day or every week in order for me to stay in a good place. So those things consist of, I have to read. Um, and by the way, I'm not a very, I'm a good reader, but I'm not a fast reader. I, I read very slowly and that has to do with my ADHD, but it takes me a long time to read a book. Um, but that, uh, and that's fine. Um, but reading, uh, like my wife has read like 72 books this year. She's like so fast. I read like two books. No, but, um, I've read more than two books, but I have to, and I, and I realize like, um, if I don't read for a few days, I start to notice, like, I need to start focusing. I need to pick up a book. I need to, you know, read a couple chapters. Also, um, I've been exercising a lot this. I know that you really got into some incredible shape. Yeah, I'm excited that I yeah, I've been uh, I mean, I used to be a big exerciser in my early 20s, but then marriage and kids and work. But I, mean, I did have two babies. So, you know, you got the uh, yeah. two babies. <laughs> my wife's been able to stay teeny tiny. Uh, I've gone up and down. So the exercise helps, especially with the anxiety, because it kind of pushes the anxiety out. And then um, I uh, I have to uh, watch something on Netflix that doesn't make me think about anything, right? I got to watch something that's just stupid and funny. I like, mean, I hope you're watching 90 Day Fiance. Come on. Oh my gosh, Lori, don't even get me started. Do we have a whole other hour to talk about this? I know the Bachelor, the Bachelorette's on tonight and like <laughs> that is with the train wreck with this. I mean, but what you're saying, it's, it's true. With so much going on in the world, you know, I, I find a lot of us had to just give up the news seven months ago, eight months ago, and watch things that were completely unrealistic to relax. Yeah, I mean, it's very. It, there's a lot going on. So just having having some sort of routine. Now I have an eight year old and a five year old. My eight year old has Tourette syndrome, uh, and so that's that's a whole other thing in itself. So he's a special needs kid. But now we're homeschooling, and it's and everybody's regular schedule has kind of gone out the window. Um, and so you have to have some degree of normalcy and you have to have some degree of routine. Of routine. And I've never been more time blocked in my life since March. And that also helps me stay focused because if I know, okay, today I've got so much to do back to back to back to back. 
like no dead time. Um, and so keeping myself busy and focused when I'm focused on work and when I'm focused on my kids and when I'm focused on my wife, yeah. if I have a few moments of doing nothing, you know, then I start to get inside my head. So in that sense, I got to stay busy and see and keep staying focused. Also, social media is not good for mental health. Uh, I find myself having to take social media breaks. Um, I find myself having to turn my phone off for the weekend. You know, that stuff is very, very um, angst ridden, especially with everything that's going on. You can't go onto Facebook without seeing something that's going to make you angry. And so no, you have to say you're, you've just given us, I wish I could write these down, but I'll go back and watch the recording. You know, you've just given us so many tools that can be used to help with making sure that you've got this plan. We all need a plan. Does it matter? You know, and so many young families look at you and Ann homeschooling, running a couple of businesses. I mean, these are not easy times. So having tools, I'm big on tools and to big on tools and systems yeah. and, businesses and having those types of things are just absolutely, uh, we can't do without them. Um, no, but I also want to say it's really important to read. You don't have to always read books about how to grow a bigger business or, or about leadership. Right. Read something for fun, like read a novel, right? Like I'm reading a notebook. I have a couple books that I read at once because I can't, I get bored and I have to switch to something else and I'll come back. Yeah. So I'm reading a book called Ready Player One, which is a novel and it's a fun uh, fantasy book about video games. Then I'm reading um, the Tim Howard biography. He was, he was considered the greatest keeper in soccer in the world. And he actually had Tourette's and OCD. So I bought this for myself and he wrote one for kids and my son is reading it. So we're reading it together and we're discussing oh, it. Oh, I love that. So, I love that. And that's, and he, he has a really, he has Tourette's OCD um, and anxiety. And he was, and when he was on the field, you would never know. Like he was so focused and just like crushed it. He's considered the best goalie ever in the history of soccer. Um, and if you just put your mind to something and just stay focused and you enjoy what you're doing, then unfortunately a lot of people can't do that. Um, but you just have to find a rhythm, you know? Yeah. I think that, that's just just like anything you have to practice. So you have to practice creating a schedule. You have to practice creating routine and sticking to it over and over and over again. Yeah. Um, would it be okay if I asked you a couple of really powerful real estate questions? Um, sure. Everybody wants, everybody wants to hear from I you. I hope I have the answer. Uh, it's okay. You're awesome. Um, you have all the answers. With all of the changes that are going on in real estate right yeah. now, and you have managed, developed, inspired so many real estate agents, Nick. Um, what would be what would be the best advice you would give to an agent today? Whether they're a single agent on a team, I don't think any of that matters. But what advice would you want to share with that agent? Oh man, uh, that is. And I, I like to. I like to. Yeah. Let let me, let me narrow that a little bit for you yeah. <laughs> right? advice. So we could have gone in any direction, right. but where I'm, where I get a lot run of run far away yes, where I get a lot of, no, don't run. Where I'm I just kidding. Of, <laughs> I know, where I get a lot of feedback right now from agents where they're struggling so much is that they're a little bit lost at the moment with, you know, this powerful seller's market and they can't find their buyer's properties. And, you know, to me, I always like to go back to the activities. So knowing that you've mentored and trained so many agents, pretend you had to give your team three activities that they had to stick to so that their business would move forward. What would you, what would you tell them they should be focused on? Oh, that's, that's a good question. You like that one? Yeah. So I, just I made it up. you just made it up. That's brilliant. brilliant. Um, I have always been big on, you know, caring about pouring into the people that you already know and that know you and that, um, you know, if you are a new agent, you haven't done business with them, uh, business with anybody or many people, uh, the people that you like agents will say, well, I just got started in real estate. Where should I get leads? So you tell them go straight to their sphere. Well, that's the, so that. that's, that's one of the most important, like leads are great, right? Like, internet leads and whatever open houses. I mean, but fear. I mean, we but can fear. all agree yeah. that fear is fear. 
you have people right there who love you and are rooting for you. Yeah. And if you're telling them that you just got into real estate, do you know anyone who you can help? You know, you're here for them. It's, I mean, that stuff's going to work. Your first deal uh, should come from, you know, someone that knows you and trusts you and is willing to purchase a home or sell a home and have you, even though you're new, be the one to help them out. And someone who already knows you and trusts you, like you don't have to pretend, you know, that you're an expert at this, right? right. Like, And someone who is an internet lead or an open house lead, you kind of like have to sort of pretend that you know more than them, right? Yeah. So get your feet wet, um, you know, reach out to the people that already know you and trust you and love you and they're going to help you get better at this and hopefully they can be one of your first transactions. I mean, I, I talk to a lot of agents that go, Oh yeah. But while they're getting licensed, you know, they're like, Oh, I'm getting licensed. And I already got a few people that want to work with me as soon as I get licensed. Like that stuff is really great, powerful stuff. Yeah. Um, and also right now during this pandemic, I mean, I have been preaching to agents that I work with, you know, start pouring into do a different type of lead generation, you know, like care calls are huge. Are you okay? What's going on? What can I get for you? But here's the difference with care calls. With care calls, you better be ready for the answer, right? That's right. If you're making the calls because you want to get business and someone says, you know what, Nick, I'm actually not that great. This pandemic's really hard on me. You better be ready to listen and do yeah. something that is going to help that person, right? And Nick, and Nick honestly, I, I hope that everyone heard what you just said because people who are in real estate or getting into real estate, you guys, this is what we do. We care for and help others. We're in the service business. So I love the care calls, but Nick, you are a thousand percent certain. You call and you just check in on them and they say, oh, I lost my job. It, you know, I'm going through a really tough time. You know, I am such a proponent is that who's there for me when things are not great. That's who's going to be in my world when things are great. So don't be afraid of making those care calls to no. people that you know, I, I want to give you a really funny script. I don't remember his name, but it was a gentleman that worked for us about 10 years ago. And he was a brand new agent. And I heard him making care calls. And this was his script. He said, hi, I forgot his name. Hi, this is Bob. And how are you? Haven't spoken to you in a while. Just want to let you know, I got my real estate license so that I could be your realtor. How are you and Susie doing? Oh, that's a good one. It was great. And you know what? It, it is you have to you have to make those care calls and you know listen you and I we know that that's what we do for a living we care for other people for so sure. I love that okay so give me two more activities you would give to your team that you would encourage them to be doing right now yeah I was always big on handwritten notes oh, so love I, it I always told my team minimum they would have to write ten a month right and so if I were a new agent I would write more but you know, with everything else you're doing, you know, I wanted to be, I wanted to be like realistic and reasonable and, um, you know, 10 a month. And if you don't know what to say or who to write notes to, or you don't know what people are up to, there is a platform called Facebook and Instagram <laughs> where it's basically everyone's life. Right. So, you know, a couple times a week, scroll through your newsfeed see what people are up to. Yeah. If you don't have their address, message it, message them. Hey, I want to send you something. Who's going to tell you? Oh, who's going to tell you? No. When someone's yeah. want to send you something, Ooh, who are you going to send yeah, me? I mean, you make yeah, a good two weeks point. ago. Someone said that to me and I got a big old box of cookies. Yeah. You make a good point. And you know what, Nick, about the handwritten notes, why I love this is because most people won't do it. No, you most people won't. You need to do things that other people are not doing. And, especially right now, some people that's their, their highlight. It's going to the mailbox and getting that note. That's my highlight and looking at Amazon and seeing where my packages are. <laughs> you know, like sometimes I just order a package on Amazon to look forward to something. I but, love it. I love but it. I want to say though, that there's, it's not just, so here's, here's the key, right? Like if you see someone, if you scroll through your newsfeed and you see that someone had a baby or someone got married, Right. Don't write them a card for that because they're going to get hundreds of cards. Yeah. For that. 
write them a card when you see your friend who whose son Timmy just scored his first goal ever in a soccer game and they post it on Facebook. Write that card. Yeah. Because no one else is going to write them a card for that. But you yeah, are different. Right. So write about little milestones like that. You know what I mean? Don't write about don't don't send a card. Listen, you're going to call them and say congrats on the baby. But the card about little Timmy is they're going to be like, wow, I can't believe Nick noticed that's he, Nick noticed that. And he wrote us. I wrote a card to a client once. I remember it like it was yesterday. She planted her new garden, like in her new house. And she would post all these pictures. She was so proud of her flowers. And I wrote her a card and she wrote me a card back. Like, what? Oh, I love it. I love yeah. it. I love it. I so, love it. I it's love the little it. things that people pay attention to. That's number two. Okay. What number more? three is you got to get out in front of people. And in a, and right now in a pandemic, you got to be safe when you do it too, right? Yeah. So if you're going to do open houses, do it safe, where, you know, do, and, and, and just protect yourself. Um, but I was a big proponent of open houses, especially to new for new agents, um, because it puts you face to face with people. Yeah, it's and really this really really got it as well. I mean, obviously, we're taking so many precautions now, yeah. but um, yeah, we were just talking as a business. You know, about twenty five percent of our business was open house, so we've mm -hmm. had to replace that with other. Oh, I know. Siri is all about Siri is all about the open house. Oh, you know, she's my but, open house queen. I know, but now you can do a virtual open house. You know, create right. an event on Facebook. Yeah, you know, hit, link it to like a Zoom registration and uh promote it for 50 bucks and you'll see people signing up you know okay. and that's a great way to do it too because at least you'll get their sign they'll write their you'll get their information yeah and some of them will pop on when you go live in the home and that's a safe way to do it and a great way to interact that's awesome okay well there's a question that so many people wanted me to ask you when they knew i was going to interview you so we're going to close out with this oh okay cool i have to bring up lab code agents i mean wow sure. it's so wow so how was Lab Code Agents born? How did that happen? How yeah. did how did you like become the the co owner of the largest real estate platform for real estate agents to have community in the world? Yeah. So um, I just want to say that in, within the group we have about a hundred and thirty ish thousand members. Then we have another group um, that has about uh, has 35,000 members. Um, and then we have, so that's like kind of an offshoot of lab coats, but it's still a lab coats group. And then we have YouTube, Instagram. So combined it's around 200,000 followers and members and stuff. And, and it's not just the group, like it's, we do webinars and we do events. Um, we're working on doing a virtual event, uh, in the next uh, couple months. Um, we have a website, labcodeagents.com, which is great resources for agents and, um, it's free. Okay. So it started about six or so years ago. My, my partner and co-founder, Tristan Almada, who's an agent in, uh, L in Los Angeles. Um, he started a group where agents could share best practices and then it kind of started to grow. And then we were introduced by a mutual friend and he and I started hosting um and sharing business practices and things of that nature and it was one of those things that like agents are by default very um private about their and how how they generate business because they're like well i'm not going to tell you because then you're going to go do it i know yeah. and my, my favorite thing is to tell you how i do it <laughs> right um but like most agents aren't going to do it and if right. they do it they're not going to do it as good as you because you're the one that thought of it and in sharing something, you're only going to get better. So um, that's kind of, and then for a while, people thought we were, we had like a hidden agenda. Well, we didn't have a hidden agenda. We kept sharing. It grew, it grew, it grew. And then, you know, technology companies wanted to like be in front of our audience. And so one of our, mon one of our models is that we have sponsorships um, with tech companies uh, we promote their products. We use their products. We do webinars with them. We talk to agents about the industry and technology and what's working and what's not. Um, 
And it's just like, not only is it the largest, it's the most engaged. And in the last 12 months, we've had over a million views on our webinars and we have 5,000 people a month posting in the group. We still have 3,000 people a month joining. Um, it's it's like never dying. It's just growing. And so yeah. it's just a community of sharing and best practices. And listen, it's the internet. There's going to be people that aren't nice. Right. Right. And uh, I, I love when you call them out. <laughs> <laughs> listen, it's like people go, oh, I can't believe LCA is so rude. I'm like, no, the internet is rude. Right, right. No, but it's really interesting. And I'm listening intently to everything you're saying. That coffee looks really good. Oh, it's so good. It's the new uh, it's the new pumpkin uh, cream cold foam cold brew. Oh my gosh, it looks delicious. But I'm listening and um, I know this is going to be a different perspective, but what I hear listening to what you have been a part of, um, I just want people to know, you know, you everyone starts somewhere. You know, Nick, what Nick is saying is like six years ago, he started working on something that is has grown into something massive. And right. I think people, they have ideas and they have so much to offer and expertise, but they're always afraid to get started because it always seems so far out. But in this day and age, there's not a lot you can't accomplish in a two to three year period. Everything happens so much faster. It's just a matter of making the decision and starting it, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. But um, I love lab code agents. Um, I follow a lot of things that you put on, put in there because as with everything, you're very transparent. You call it like it is. Um, I can believe everything you say because you're just, you say it the way it should be said. And again, Nick, my, my biggest attraction is that you give other people the freedom, the comfort and the right to be who they are. And, you know, listen to me, we're, we're all God's gift and mm -hmm. every single person, you know, we deserve to be uh, loved for who we are and respected for who we are. And I'm just so grateful to have had the opportunity um, that you were to give me 30 minutes of your time. And if there's anything else you want to add as we sign off, it's all up to you, my friend. Oh, no. I mean, I appreciate all of that. And I've always respected you and, you know, you are running an awesome business and you've always been so supportive. So I want to say thank you for that. And, you know, Saria is one of my closest friends. And uh, even though I drive her absolutely crazy sometimes, um, she, you know, she's the best. She's the best. She's the best. Um, and so thank you. I appreciate that. And uh, yeah, I mean, listen, it, I, I've been in the business for 14 years, but it really wasn't like, it was really probably like I don't know, four years ago when I, four or five years ago when I really started to kind of um, get serious and um, focus on or what direction I should go in. And, you know, uh, I'm doing what I, I'm doing what I like to do right now. Um, I don't like to sell houses. I've never liked to sell houses. But what I like to do is help agents get better at selling houses, whether I'm running a team yeah. or doing the posi position I'm doing now, uh, the regional tech trainer role, or if I'm doing something with the lab coats, you know, if I'm doing consulting with agents, like that's the stuff that makes me uh, feel more. It makes me, it just makes me feel like when I see somebody put something into play that I did or that I suggested and it feel like you're contributing at the highest. Yeah, like that's so cool to me, you know. Like someone says, Nick, I did this, and I gen and I made a hundred thousand dollars more than I did last year. Like that's cool to me. Like that makes you me. Love, you love people winning, and um, you know, you you just brought up a really quick point, and that is that you know when I got into real estate a really long time ago, there weren't all these different opportunities. There are so many no. different ways to enter our field, right? You don't have to just be an agent. There's lots of other jobs that you could do for within sure. Real so I always say for people who have the passion and the compassion and the empathy for humans, this is the industry for us. I wish I wish people could really check that about themselves. You know, are you compassionate? Are you empathetic? Do you want to help others? Because if you do, come on into our industry. We need yeah. it. But no, I want, I agree. again, I want to thank you. I'm, I'm, I'm making a big heart for you. <laughs> um, get excited to receive my gift that I send to all my table talk live. Ooh, I'm excited. Oh, it's so what, Did you fun. send it already? 
what uh, it'll be go, it'll go out today it's oh, today. okay cool 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 yes i'll give you a hint i'll give you a hint it's a hint is it a yeti it's a yeti oh i love yetis yeah i love yetis we have my wife always and my kids then they steal it so oh, uh, no. gus will probably drink milk out of it or something but oh, that's super fun. i love it i love it i love it well nick i thank you again and uh just you know keep changing our industry you're doing a great job well, and thank I, you very much. I just thank you so much. Thanks well, for thank you, Lori. Have an awesome day. I appreciate you, you having me. Too. Take care, Nick.